Welcome back, everybody. Today we are going to do some experimental miniature painting and answer the question, can you shade gold with blue? The really smart and attractive people watching already know about my TMNT technique. That's the true metal non-metallic technique. It works well on doing any sort of gray armor like steel. However, I've been struggling to come up with a similar technique for gold. Gold by nature is very pure. It doesn't have any nuance of uh, colors in it like blue or purple. It doesn't tarnish, doesn't rust. So adding different colors to gold is usually a recipe for disaster. But you know what? We learn by experimenting. So let's see what happens if we try to use the standard TMNT technique, except this time with gold. So the TMNT technique refers to mixing metallic and non-metallic paints together to get the properties, the best properties of each one. So we want the metallic sheen on the highlights and we want the dull shaded contrast of the non-metallic paint in the recesses. To begin with, we are going to start off with a base coat mix of game color Glorious Gold and Heavy Sienna. This mix is going to do a couple of things. A, it's going to take a little bit of the sheen out of our gold. Remember, we want to keep that sheen just for the highlights. Uh, B, it's going to help with coverage since metallic paints uh, notoriously don't cover well. And also, it's going to add a little bit of richness to our gold. Now here is where things get a little weird. For our shadow, we are going to mix stormy blue with scurvy green. Now these are the same two colors I use with the steel version of the TMNT technique. However, in this case, I'm relying much more on the blue than the green. I don't want to put green on my gold because then it's going to look uh, like fake gold. Now we're going to layer this color into our recesses. This is going to give us not only shade, but color to our gold. You can apply this like an overall wash if you like. I'm trying to do this a little bit more precise to get exactly where I want it. And this is where we stand after about two to three layers of this color. It's a little bit excessive at the moment, but I always like to go back to our base coat and do a cleanup step rather than miss putting the shade somewhere where I need it to be. For our secondary shadow, I'm adding some Vallejo model color violet to that previous stormy blue and scurvy green mix. Normally, I would just add a little bit of black, but I decided to just to continue on with the color theme, get a little hint of violet just in the deepest recesses. This is very subtle. You can see uh, just going in the deep nooks and crannies. Uh, basically, it's a dark line on this miniature, and that's about it. With that done, we then return to our base coat mixture, and this is basically a clean up stage. As I mentioned, I like to be a little bit sloppy with my shade layers. I'd rather make sure I get it everywhere I need it rather than missing a spot. So I tend to apply it fairly heavily because then I can just go back to this stage to do any cleanup work. And honestly, I find layering up to highlights then layering in shadows much, much easier. So this is an optional stage based on uh, how clean your wash was. However, I do like this stage. Just tweak our shadow a little bit to make sure everything's situated in place. From here, we can work on our highlights first using straight glorious gold. And hopefully now you can see the full TMNT technique. We have our pure metallic for our highlights and that's reflecting the most amount of light, getting the natural sheen of metallics. 
We have the base coat, which is a slightly dulled metallic with the heavy sienna mixed in with the gold. And then in our shadow regions, we have uh, a number of washes over those to make those very dull. So shadows, not reflective, also have some color in them. And as we approach the highlight, that's where you get the, the sparkle and the sheen. And then for a final edge highlight, Glorious Gold mixed with a very small amount of steel. Uh, it's a very subtle highlight here. Don't add too much steel. If you start going into silver, it starts looking like fake gold. And here is our finished Roman Centurion, heavily washed out thanks to the desk lighting. As you can see with the rest of the miniature painted, the blue in the armor looks much less intense now. So decided to go back and try to emphasize the blue a little bit more by giving the armor a glaze of model color dark Prussian blue in the recesses. Just a little bit to emphasize the stormy blue that we put on earlier. And there we go, gold shaded with blue. Now normally for gold, I would shade it with brown or brownish red, which really adds to the richness of it. Uh, the concept behind this was to try to add uh, a little bit more interest to the gold. The problem is that I'm a realistic style painter and not a cartoon style painter. And since gold is pure, adding different colors to it, it just seems wrong in my mind. Decided to try it here just to see what happens because experimenting is always good for your painting. If your painting mindset is more about just making something that looks really cool, uh, I can see this idea working a bit better for you. Uh, also, I can see it working pretty well on a larger piece of gold where you have a larger smooth surface areas where you can uh, really work the gold rather than here where I just put it into the deeper recesses. But again, experimenting is the key here. Always be trying new things, even if they sound really weird. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye. When we return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture.